Well, hello and welcome to the final trade day here at Farnborough for 2018. I'm Andy Marler. And I'm Alan Peeford, and we're better to give a great overview of the things we've enjoyed this week than here in the Lockheed Martin Space Cafe. Absolutely. Space has been a great feature of the show this year, and we're delighted that we'll be able to talk to Tim Peake later in today's programme. And I tell you what, it's been a great atmosphere. No, Alan, we're in space. There is no atmosphere. <laughs> well, there's been a bit of an atmosphere when the subject of Brexit's been raised, and not least so when the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, came to Farnborough on Monday to officially open the show. During her whirlwind visit, there was a raft of funding deals to boost technology and R&D in aerospace and defence. That included £2 billion to development funding for the Tempest, the UK's future combat aircraft. In this year's new Fin Sessions conference, Brexit was a key debate. Former Secretary of State and now Chair of the Treasury Select Committee, Nikki Morgan, made her feelings clear that she backed Airframer Airbus's intervention in the Brexit debate. I think there is nothing uh, that speaks so loudly as a person from frontline business, or in my old job it was frontline education, but let's say frontline business now, who cuts through to, to people in a way that politicians just can't. While politicians debate the value of mobile workforces, others have been reinforcing the concerns about shortages of labour and the sorry future for aerospace if we don't get to grips with the need to inspire young people to the STEM subjects. One of those was former Apollo 15 commander Al Walden. Both Western Europe and the US um, are not graduating the numbers of engineers that we need uh, to carry on a progressive and aggressive space programme. Friday at the show was Farnborough's Futures Day. Another astronaut, the UK's Tim Peake, joined the Finn team in the studio. To me, it's one of the most important days of the air show. Uh, over 5,000 young students will be coming here. Uh, we can demonstrate to them some of the latest exciting uh, techniques in science and engineering, some really innovative things around here. But more so than that, they get an opportunity to speak to people who are in the industry and to find out more about the possible careers that are open to them. And it's been a great week for UK space, with the Space Agency announcing not one but two spaceports. New key in Cornwall for horizontal takeoff, a collaboration with Virgin Orbit, and Sutherland in Melness in Scotland for a vertical takeoff with partner Lockheed Martin. In the commercial air transport sector, all eyes were on the regional market and the coming together of Bombardier and Airbus, with the rebranding of the Canadian flagship C Series to become the Airbus A220 and the more recent acquisition of 80% of Embraer's commercial aircraft business by Boeing. Embraer demonstrated that it still has plenty of bite with an amazing paint job in its E190 E2, with the Profit Hunter cutting a creative shape in the skies above the Farnborough airfield. Another regional jet that made an impact was Japan's pioneering MRJ-90. The Mitsubishi aircraft was the first to adopt the Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan engine and with its clean sheet design was making an international debut to emphasise that there is a third way. The Finn sessions were packed and no time more so than when we were looking at the innovations and the insights into the new urban mobility sector. Rolls-Royce entered the market with its plans for an electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, while SME Faraday added an all-electric and a military variant to its now 10-seater intercity hybrid carrier, Beha. Ambria X is collaborating with Uber to make an all-electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft and its ecosystem a reality. Aston Martin and Airbus were also showing new concepts, and in personalized aircraft, Holland's flying car, the PAL-5, made its Farnborough debut. On the reverse side, Lockheed Martin showed just how the C-130J Super Hercules can be reinvented to become a civil transporter. The LM-100J certainly pulled some stunts that would have spilled the teacups in the control tower if they tried that near Heathrow. Turkey's T-129 was another to demonstrate manoeuvrability as it was head over heels with the recent 30 aircraft order from Pakistan. Of course, shows like Farnborough are defined by the numbers. And the CEO of Farnborough International, Gareth Rogers, came into the studio to give us an update on the overall performance as the whistle blew for full time on the trade days of the show. Fabulous show. Visitor numbers up, 10,000. Queuing down, which is great for all those visitors. Orders up, exhibitors up, and international audience up. You know, what more could we ask for? It's been a fabulous show. The last count I heard, which was um, not quite at the end of the show, was 180 billion, which, you know, far exceeds 124 billion we had in 2016. 
So as it draws to a close for us, we hand over to our colleagues Angelica and Michael for the air show live and the public days. Your burger, Mr. Peaford. Uh, thank you very much. And we're going to be live on stage in the heart of the public arena and on the big screens across the whole Farnborough site, building up to the biggest and best flying display in the world. We've got loads of live guests coming up on stage. We've got the Red Arrows, the Red Bull Pilots. We'll be looking at BA cabin uniforms through the years. We'll be meeting a 99-year-old Farnborough and RAF veteran. We've got science experiments from the Winchester Science Centre. Lots and lots of things, competition, and also lots of films looking at the aviation world. It's going to be fun and fascinating, so please join us. Now, this roundup has just been a tiny smidgen of many of the great stories, the brightest stars, and the fabulous sessions that we've been covering here at Farnborough Air Show for this week. And you can see those full stories, including that interview View with Tim Peake by going to our website wearefin.com. Thank you very much for being with us this week and we'll see you again soon. Bye.